In this video, we are looking at John C. Calhoun's Slavery is a Positive Good. But first, shout out to Miss Heller's class at Appleton West for this request. I moved this one up on my list so it could get to you in time. Now let's get into the context. First of all, this is in the era of the Second Great Awakening. Immigration and reform movements and the market revolution are occurring in the North and changing that society. However, things in the South have mostly stayed the same with their plantation aristocracy. There was a big economic development occurring in the South through the growth of the cash crop, cotton. This occurred because the invention called the cotton gin was able to efficiently separate the cotton seed from the cotton boil. Cotton production is going to take off over the early to mid 1800s, which will lead to the demand and labor to pick the cotton. Despite the international slave trade being banned, the domestic slave market grew, going from around 1 million slaves in the United States in 1790 to 4 million by 1860. Finally, the abolitionists, mostly in the North, were becoming a very vocal reform group. Two of their leading publications were The Liberator and The North Star, which discussed and attacked slavery. Turning now to the primary source, slavery is a positive good. The source attempts to change the perception of slavery from a necessary evil or peculiar institution to a positive good in a deep and cherished part of Southern society. Calhoun argues that the South cannot concede or compromise any ground to the abolitionists because doing so would lead to a slippery slope and the destruction of the Southern way of life. To get to Calhoun's other main points, I am just going to quote from him because I do not want to put some of these main points into my own words. Quote, Abolition and the Union cannot coexist. And, quote, never before has the black race of Central Africa, from the dawn of history to the present day, attained a condition so civilized and so improved, not only physically, but morally and intellectually. Calhoun is trying to shore up his support in the South and also appeal to Northerners who do not want division over slavery. It is a misnomer to think that the entire North is against slavery. Calhoun's purpose is to push against abolitionism, any compromises on slavery, and make the argument that slavery is a positive good. Calhoun's point of view is that of a southern slave-owning aristocrat, aiming to protect and preserve the South's economy and social structure. Calhoun's ideas would have been mainstream amongst the white population in the South, and with a significant amount of the North. Northern abolitionists and those who want to change and advance the country through industrialization and the spread of free labor would have vehemently disagreed. It is important to note that there are both moral and economic arguments against slavery. And now on to the legacy of Calhoun's positive good. This source or any source arguing for slavery does not age well. You'll most likely see this source just in this time period centered around the growth of the cotton economy in the South, increasing influence of abolitionists in the North, and the ardent defense Southern politicians will put up when slavery is attacked. Well, that does it for this document. If you liked the video, click that button, subscribe, and share with your friends.